my name is Agnieszka Wiśniewska. Uh, I'm an editor in chief in uh, kritykapolityczna.pl. It's like opinion daily, uh, internet opinion daily run by Krytyka Polityczna. Well, Michał Sutowski, uh, commentator and uh, writer and uh, translator working for Krytyka Polityczna for Poland. My name is Igor Stokiszewski. I, I am a member of uh, Political Critic Organization operating within Poland and uh, Ukraine, and I am dealing mostly with uh, issues of culture and some part of uh, international uh, affairs of the organization, especially social movements from Southern uh, Europe. <laughs> Agnieszka, to begin, uh, Poland has really been the poster child of European integration until recently. It was a, a country with high economic growth, a developing civil society, uh, perfect integration in European Union decision-making. The presidency of the European Council went to Donald Tusk, who, who is a, a Pole and a former prime minister of Poland. And yet, over the last months, Poland has been on the headlines for very different reasons. The right of the extreme right, a new authoritarian regime, attacks on the freedom of the press, of the judiciary, uh, and regressive policies generally. Can you explain to us uh, how this came about and what's happening in Poland? Uh, for, uh, during this 25, right now 26 years after 1989, uh, we were really focused uh, into this... Uh, you know, this liberal agenda, and uh, I think the politicians, uh, they were focused in, on this, uh, you know, the, uh, all these ratings, all this being Green Island, all this uh, just uh, putting much more uh, liberalism and neoliberalism and capitalism into Poland, and they totally forgot about people. I think it's like, you know, Pol like the Polish situation were better and better, but the situation of the people in Poland were not. And right now we have to pay for that. Uh, when the uh, uh, sort of a multi-dimensional crisis of the EU uh, came to the fore in the recent years, namely the crisis of the Eurozone, and of course um, uh, the refugee crisis in the South uh, and in Germany, as well as uh, the uh, security crisis uh, in the eastern uh, neighborhood of, uh, of, of EU, then uh, many people realized that um, uh, European Union is a much more complicated uh, entity and a phenomenon. And um, uh, this, uh, this uh, power, uh, this discursive power that uh, uh, EU gave uh, to the liberal forces in Poland um, uh, seems now to be exhausted. Uh, and uh, we must remember that uh, the European Union, the Europeanization, the modernization uh, understood as uh, uh, being in the mainstream of European uh, politics, uh, this was the uh, the core of the of the uh, civic platform's message, so of the uh, former ruling party. Um, what is also important uh, is that is the fact uh, that uh, despite of um, being presented by the former ruling elite as uh, the so-called Green Island, so the country that survived uh, the economic crisis relatively well, um, among others in Europe. Uh, the burden of the crisis uh, was felt very much by um, a very broad spread of Polish society, uh, mostly by the younger generation. I would uh, emphasize the uh, historical reasons, I have, to, I have to say. So, first of all, we have to remember that uh, Poland, as well as uh, uh, countries like Hungary or Croatia, were uh, in uh, the second part of the... In, uh, 20th century and the so-called leftist, uh, you know, dictatorships, and uh, it uh, really does make a difference uh, because uh, when you operate within a society which is somehow uh, somehow uh, occupied by the idea that the left is bad, uh, it is really uh, it is really uh, difficult to 
to introduce the uh, values that are followed or associated to uh, leftist uh, or liberal leftist um, sensitivities or uh, agendas. So this is, uh, I think, very important. All the, in fact, when we think about so-called democratic opposition in communist uh, countries, we are thinking about the rightist opposition. So the people who are now at the moment in the, in the very power in our country. So this first thing. Second, of course, the role of Catholic Church as a, as a really strong um, social political organization. Uh, and it is also due to the historical fact that uh, Catholic Church was um, very much supportive for the democratic transition in, uh, or democratic opposition in the communist era. So after 89, after communism collapsed, it became really a very powerful uh, institution. And uh, they are, at the moment, they are, since a few years, they are simply uh, gaining their political <coughs> advantage out of that uh, fact. And the third thing I would um, say is the weakness of uh, new leftist movements. And it's also, I think, it's also a kind of geopolitical and historical uh, phenomenon. Uh, and it's related to the fact that the leftist agenda was really delegitimized for um, many years after uh, communist time. And it is since maybe 2000, year, year 2000, 2000 something, when we are rebuilding a new type of uh, leftist approach uh, in, uh, in post-communist countries. So, and of course, it was unable to stop or resist the wave of uh, right wing, of uh, rise of right wing uh, movements and powers in this short time of 10 years that we are operating with new leftist ideas in our country. So, probably those are the, uh, the historical reasons, and they, you know, they also relate to uh, differences within the European dynamics, social political uh, dynamics. And maybe let me just ask you one last question on the uh, on the region again, because with Critical Politichna, you've just set up uh, politicalcritique.org uh, as a collaboration with uh, other organizations and associations from Central and Eastern Europe. I know that uh, uh, we've been hearing about uh, a certain difference in culture that the transition of the last 25 years has brought about. It's true about Poland, but it's, it's also true about other parts of Eastern Europe, obviously. So what is the vision of Kritika in terms of building uh, perhaps a regional alliance or a, a regional force to change this discourse beyond, uh, beyond just, just Poland? What's your vision with this new project? This is... Uh... From the beginning, uh, in Kritika Polityczna, we were focused on East. Like after transition, many organizations in Poland were focused on the West. Most of organizations and social movements, because we we just joined to the West and we thought that you know now we had to show that we are a part of this this West and we had to learn from the West uh, how to work, how to build this new open society, and. Uh, and for us, we thought that we are part of this Eastern narration. That's why when the social movements on uh, Southern Europe started to grow up, like, you know, Indignados movement, uh, the movements in, uh, in Italy, we were, uh, we were in contact with that movement. And uh, we followed all this discussion about uh, real democracy, commons, and, all, uh, and, and so on. But also we could see that in our region, we can define some different, like, different uh, important topics. And we could see that, uh, I remember when I was in Rome on Agora 99 and uh, meeting, and we talked about the Europe and about Southern, about, uh, about borders. And I said, you know, that we talk about Southern border of the Europe, but there is also Eastern border. And it was two weeks before Maidan. And everyone thought that I'm from Ukraine because I talked about the region all the time. And uh, for us, this region is very important because of the history, because of this, uh, we, all, uh, we all could uh, see this shock doctrine, you know, in 1989. We all could see that uh, when we joined to the West, the West started to change, but we were like, you know, we just, this is like uh, when you will come at the party, after midnight and everyone are, you know, a bit drunk and everyone are dancing and you just came and like, you see that 
you, you cannot follow this. And we were in this situation somehow, and that we, we, we wanted to be the part of the West, but the West we, from the past somehow, and the West changed. Another question, we spoke a lot about Poland, but I'd like to speak about the European Union as seen from Poland. Mm -hmm. And over the last uh, we've seen a lot of uh, meetings from the Plan B meeting in Paris to the launch of a new movement by Yanis Varoufakis that questioned the status quo of the European Union and tried to posit a way out of the institutional and democratic crisis of the European Union. What do you think can be Poland's contribution to this discourse? What do you think could be a way to see a stronger participation of movements and citizens from Poland in critically reflecting not only about Poland, but about what the European Union has become and what instead it should become in the future? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think that uh, the, uh, this uh, meeting with Varoufakis was uh, very symptomatic in terms of uh, what is okay and what is wrong with the, uh, with the European left and with the proposals. Um, of change that are that are given by by, by the leftist forces in the EU. Uh, I totally agree with the economic analysis given by uh, Yanis Varoufakis. Um, uh, what I think is uh, problematic is, in my opinion, there is some sort of a, re a reductionism of um, European problems to economy. Uh, it's not only about economy, it's also about different other aspects of uh, political and uh, social life, although I uh, fully share Varoufakis' view on what is to be done with the economy. Uh, I think uh, in order to create a big pro-democratic movement in Europe, we need to connect the disconnected, namely to connect the economic questions, the migrant, uh, the, 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 the migrant uh, uh, cri uh, migration crisis and the questions of the so-called hot security in, in the East. Uh, I don't say it is an easy task to connect this, um, this uh, spheres, but nevertheless, I think a good uh, formula for political movement should take into account all this uh, all these um, aspects, and I believe that uh, Central and Eastern Europe has a huge task uh, to to show this past perspective that are, in my opinion, now lacking. In a last question on the role of culture. Uh, historically, artists, writers, intellectuals, cultural figures have played a very important role in defining and redefining uh, the history and the politics, in fact, of Europe. Today seems to be not so much the case as was previously in the last century. But the challenges we're facing today seem to be challenges of uh, a redefinition of the type of community that we want to build, faced with uh, the collapse or the near collapse of a certain system of value and a certain institutional space in the European Union that is proving day after day its incapacity and its irrelevance any, anymore. So faced with the, with the need to reimagine and rearticulate our common living together, do you think there is the need or there is a space uh, to reimagine a much more activist uh, artistic involvement in the years ahead? Absolutely. I think that uh, at the moment we are really under, uh, underestimating the true role of culture in the let's call it democratic transition, we are all uh, struggling in favor for it. Because, you know, I remember an uh, analysis of uh, Castells who said, when uh, analyzing the phenomenon of 2011 movements, he said that, uh, that all the social movements uh, should in some way be cultural movements, meaning that they should go really deep in the, uh, how people create relationships, how uh, people express themselves, how they, uh, create bonds and uh, you know interchanges between uh, each other and this is somehow the this fundament of uh, culture and this could be an effective uh, effective point of departure for social and uh, political aims and uh, agendas that's first thing